so, so many years. I tried to get track and field, everything that I had, get my best out on the field and just wanted to, you know, walk away knowing that I gave my best and I have no regrets. Opening ceremonies for the Olympics begin on July 23rd, right here on Five on Your Side. So we thought tonight would be a great opportunity to talk with our greatest Olympic athlete ever. That is tonight's Cardinal Buick Sunday Conversation. We go one-on-one -on -one with Jackie joyner Kersey. So we know you're the world's greatest athlete. We know you were a great basketball player, but question number one, were you ever bad at anything or are you bad at anything at all athletically? Well, <laughs> yes, there are several things that I'm not uh, good at. One being, I'm not a good dancer, you know, uh, and, but I don't mind challenging myself and, you know, and also making fun of myself, trying something new and not taking myself too seriously. Well, I'd love to see you as a bad dancer. <laughs> oh, I, you know what? I dance really well sitting down. Well, let's get to the Olympics. What would it be like for you to perform with no fans in the stands like these athletes will do this summer? It would be tough. It's tough. You know, you train all these years, but uh, every day is something new, something's changing. And and uh, those athletes that are ready, it almost be like, you know, a real high level practice, you know, without fans and, uh, you know, but I, I commend them and, and I'm pulling for each and every one of them. A hot topic, Olympic related, Shakari Richardson, not allowed to compete, even though she probably is the fastest female in the United States. She tested positive for marijuana. We know that's not a performance enhancing drug, but your take on the whole situation, your former doctor, Rick Lehman says, everybody knows the rules. I do feel for her, you know, knowing working all these years, but uh, I can't imagine uh, what she was going through, the loss of her mom and all the other circumstances. But to me, she handled everything like a true champ, admitting it and, and moving forward. I'm wondering how often you think about your former sister-in-law, Florence Griffith Joyner, who died 33 years ago at the age of 38. And I guess with the Olympics happening and with the way Richardson performed, a lot of people thought about Flo jo. How often do you think about her, Jackie? You know what, I can't help but to think about it every day, you know, talking, you know, with my brother every day, uh, the daughter Mary and, and you know, and then with the, the Olympics and then so many people paying homage to, uh, to Florence and, you know, it's just uh, whenever the Olympics roll around, a lot of people uh, think of her at that time, but to us, we, we think about her uh, every day, you know, and it's just uh, such a big loss, but I love how uh, the athletes are paying homage to her and keeping her uh, memory and everything that she was able to do for our sport beyond running fast, you know, on the field. One of the greatest things about your career is that you never took steroids. Bob Gibson told me once during an interview that if he were offered steroids, he may have done it. Why did you always resist? You know what? I think that one, uh, my faith in God and also my faith in my ability and, and all the coaches and everyone who worked with me, you know, our conversation was always based around uh, the commitment to the hard work, you know, doing whatever we had to do, putting in the time and understanding that uh, we talk about trusting the process and then trusting the process is that you don't be impatient, you know, slow and steady, you know, and, and sometimes, you know, that's just not a conversation, you know, we would have, you know, so it was really about putting the work. You know, and that's why I knew when I left the sport, I had given it all I had to give. You know, I left it all, you know, on the track and and sometimes just leaving portions of my uh, tissue mus muscle or, you know, just giving it all. A lot of athletes, ex-athletes, wake up sore every day. How about yourself? Oh, you know what? I'm one that uh, I don't overextend myself. You know, I, I have a routine, you know, I believe in stretching, I work out. And when I overextend myself, yes, I get a little soreness, but that that also says that I, I'm doing the work. You know, I, I go out to the park, I walk, I run hills, but you know, I don't push myself because I have no need to push myself, you know? So I really try to find the balance, but not to the point where I'm extremely sore and I don't want to do it anymore. 
Do you ever act like the rest of us and get a couple of sloppy cheeseburgers and a beer? <laughs> you know what? I never drank before, but I don't mind having a, a cheeseburger with just mustard and pickles and lettuce on it. <laughs> what title would you rather have? The world's greatest athlete, which you already have, or the world's wealthiest woman? Oh, and you miss one. I think the world's greatest person is the title I would want. I think you got that too. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't mind having a little wealth too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Say I'm wealthy. I'm talking like Mike Bush wealthy. And I say I have a checkbook in front of me right now. I'm going to write you a check for your six Olympic medals. What would the number be? Oh, wow. You know what? I think a, a good number would be, you know, it's seven events, seven billion. That would be <laughs> awesome. You know, <laughs> I could donate that, donate that to my center, you know. <laughs>